Hello and welcome along to another episode of this Cricket 19 career with me, Daniel. It's episode 37 and today we continue our T20 Blast campaign with Yorkshire. We face Worcestershire away from home as we start to make some progress in the competition, having put together a run of wins in recent games off camera. Since you were last with me, we've had three or four T20 matches. We also had a first class game as well. We very nearly came back for a milestone earlier on. I actually put the recorder on and was about to show you the moment and in the very next ball it all went wrong so we'll have a look at that in a moment too. Then of course we'll get into the game against Worcestershire, we've got four more T20 games in a row after that and we'll come back again next time for the one against Somerset before we resume our first class campaign. But let's go and have a look at those results we were talking about and we'll start with the T20 competition. You were last with me for the T20 game against Nottinghamshire I believe and in the one after that we played against Northamptonshire. And we backed up our first victory with another one by seven wickets. And in this one, we managed to get player of the match as well. Not so much for our performance with the bat. Again, a pretty solid 34 off 22. But three wickets for 28 runs. The most wickets of any bowler in the match. And that led our side to victory in the end. And gave us a total that was easy to chase down. In the following game, we won again. This time by 29 runs against Somerset. Batting first. And this is the one we came back for but lost out on a milestone. After 99 or 55 balls, we turned on the recorder, and the very next ball we got out, so it didn't lead to an episode. Unfortunately, we fell one short of our first T20 blast century, a moment that would have been monumental. But we did set a platform for a quite comfortable win in the end, and then took one for 13 towards the end of the match, as we helped slow Somerset's chase towards the end. A really brilliant game for us all round, and a second in succession we were player of the match. And then if we go to the third one after that, of course we we played at Lords in our T20 Blast debut. This time we didn't get player of the match, but we did make a significant contribution. 44 not out off 35 balls, again playing the anchor innings as we did before. Gary Balance went ballistic and got 96 not out of 58, and that led us to victory very comfortably. After our two wickets for 21 runs, helped give us a pretty moderate total to chase. So a really good spell for us with the ball again, and we're looking pretty solid with the bat, and because we've had a couple of innings that aren't out, it means that we've had a better average overall. So we're going into our next one in a moment, but let me also show you the County Cup match we played. The one game we played at first class level and we won it by three wickets against Glamorgan. A bit of a strange match again, probably not our best with the bat actually and we didn't do too much with the ball either. It was just a quiet day all round for us. So we started quite well. In our first innings we got 365. 53 of those runs were posted by us. A really decent innings as an opener. Jack Leaning went and got 100. He stole the show in the end. As you can see he also got 76 not out on the second innings too. He looked us to victory pretty comfortably. With the ball we did have a few overs I think. Five overs for five runs, really good economy, but didn't look like taking a wicket in the first innings. And in the second, as the opponents Glamorgan followed on, we didn't get a chance to bowl at all. So that's where we stand at the moment. Pretty good form across all competitions. But of course we need to continue that today in front of the cameras, as we play Worcestershire away from home. So let's go and see what the pitch is like. A pretty even match between two good sides. A medium standard pitch, we've gone back to getting that every game now. So we'll go and get into this match. And and see if we can cope with the usual conditions. Time for the toss here and it's the Yorkshire bowler and skipper who's making the call. Let's see if he wins the toss and what he goes for. Of course it's the suspense of waiting 20 seconds every time. So let's see what Worcestershire go for. They've won the toss. Fingers crossed they'll bowl first and let us set a total. Although either way we've done pretty well in recent games. Though we are getting our choice and to bat first. So we'll be back in a moment to face our first ball. Hopefully we can set an explosive platform. First ball of the match and it's Barnard the right arm seamer over the wicket and again it's an easy one to get to the leg side but not a very clean connection off our first shot and it's just going to be a single to bring Brook on strike. He's obviously been a hero a couple of times this year but we'd like to be the one to set the tone today. Two balls gone and Harry Brook starts with a single as well. This one we tried to hit a bit better but in fact we're going to do well to get a single here. Brook has to scamper through to the striker's end. Pennington in, I think he was a left hander wasn't he, must be a different one because this one's right handed, again we don't get a good connection on it, really struggling to judge the pace so far, Harry Brooks eating up deliveries at the other end and the pressure's on us now when we get back on strike, it's been a really slow start to the power play. 
two overs gone and Yorkshire struggling. Harry Brook just seven off nine. We're going to have to start to go a bit more quickly soon. So let's see if we can get this one away for four. Again, we've not connected very well. So just one more, not much to shout about. We've got to start finding a boundary soon. Last ball of the third over. Harry Brooks going well at the other end now. 16 off 13 for him. And that shot looks a little better from us as well. It's beating the fielder and it'll get to the boundary for four. Not the most coherent sentence we'll ever come up with. But we're going at eight and over all of a sudden. Two boundaries in that over and it's really helped us. Yorkshire 24 without loss after three. Final ball of the fourth over. Harry Brooks been a little bit slow in this over. Just one run off five balls and now we're going to finish with a single. It'll keep us on strike for the other end. We'll face the first ball of the fifth over. It's Pennington's continue over the wicket. And this time there's plenty of space on the leg side. But again we've not connected well enough. We should get two here as the fielder's got to run a fair way. But we're not going to get that much desired boundary. And we continue to struggle to get our timing right. Can we double our score for this one? Two off the first ball, that one's not good either. And in fact it's going to half, it'll only be a single. And we need Harry Brook to come to the rescue again. We've not found our timing at all yet. We need him to start hitting them out the middle. The power plays over and Harry Brooks done just what we need at the other end. He's now rushed to 38 off 27, which by my reckoning means he got 21 off the last 10 balls of the power play. Takes Yorkshire past 50 as we get a single there and we're just going to feed him the strike. We've got to treat the player in form with respect. He's managed to get himself out though, although he has added a few more runs. We've joined by Gary Balance in the middle as we face spin for the first time. We just play down the ground for a single to deep mid off. And thankfully we've put Gary Balance back on strike. He's managed to get five off those three deliveries. Again it's the same field for us. We can go pretty much anywhere for an easy single. But it's very difficult to get boundaries at this stage. We're just going to try and rebuild for a few overs with Balance. And then we will start to be the aggressor. Eight overs gone and Pennington's in for his last. The field's gone out on the offside. We're going to have to play to leg though. All the deliveries suit that. Just one to start the over to make sure we can get four or five off this one. Then we can start to be aggressive again. Let's let Gary Balance get settled. Well, he did just that off the rest of the over. 11 off 10 for him now. We've got the spinner back in, so we're going to try and play down the ground. And this one's just going to be one, as it probably wasn't the best connection. Yorkshire move on to 70, and we're starting to tick over quite nicely. Halfway through the innings, it's 76 without loss. Tongue's back in, who had a really economical first over in the power play. Just two conceded off that one, and he starts with a dot ball to us here. Remarkably, there's been over 60 overs in this innings, and we've only faced 15 of them. Make that 16 as we get a single down towards third man. Just a single from the short ball. Gary Balance can be the aggressor again. He gets us into the 80s, and now we're facing Wayne Parnell, the new bowler. We're going to try and be aggressive, and we've completely mistimed it. But he did touch the bat, and I think we'll get a single. The wicket keeper has to chase it to the edge of the circle. One more run added. A leg boy's been given, and Gary Balance will face the rest of the over. Well, he's not particularly rotating the strike, but he is scoring big runs. Now 33 off 24, so he can just be the anchor again. This one goes to the leg side for one. We've got to feed the strike to the informed batsman. His tongue in for his third over. And a short ball outside leg to start. I think we've got enough on that to reach the boundary. Just goes past the fielder in the deep. A brilliant shot for four to start. As Gary Balance has moved into the 40s at the other end. Yorkshire well past 100 now as well. It looks like we're both pressing the accelerator. We tried to get that one to the leg side as well. But we've missed it and it's straight through to the keeper. We're 23 off 20 and we've probably got to press the go button now. See if we can go big over the top. Try to go between cover and mid off. Thankfully there's not a man at extra cover. Otherwise that would have been caught easily. But in the end we get four with just a couple of bounces. And we're starting to get the bit of luck we need. 27 off 21. Yorkshire onto 111. And we're just going to go big every ball now. See if we can reach the boundary. That one split the fielders on the leg side as well. One bounce and four. And so Sometimes you get caught first ball doing this, but on this occasion it's working out brilliantly for us. Two balls left in the over and it's gone for 12 already. The bowler will feel hard done by, but we don't connect with this one well and we will just get a single. And Balance will face the last ball of the 14th over. I don't quite know how, but he's managed to get seven runs off it. So there must have been a no ball or a wide which he scored off. We've edged this one down towards third man, but we just sneak through for a single. We could have lost our wicket on another day, but at least we're showing we've got that other side of our game. 
Balance gets a single to move on to 49 himself. And we're going to go big from Wayne Parnell here. We've got to try and find a route over the boundary. But I think we've picked up the field at this time. We have, but we did manage to cross before it was core. So Gary Balance will be on strike to try and get his 50. And unfortunately, we've got out for another decent score. We weren't quite there till the end this time. But 33 off 25. And we just had to press the accelerator there. Let's go and see what Yorkshire can post. And we'll be back in a minute for our bowling inning. Well, we're back to bowl our first over immediately after Worcestershire's power play. And things have gone brilliantly since we left the action on camera. Gary Balance made it to 62 not out in the end. Jack leaning with a quick fire 26 as well. That took Yorkshire to 167 for two. And now we've got Worcestershire 48 for four. A brilliant start from both pace bowlers. So we're coming in with six overs gone. And it's a chance for me to show you our change to the field as well. It's been really beneficial in T20 cricket. You've seen the wickets we've taken in recent games. And that's partly because we've put the fielders out deeper. We've not really changed the roles too much. The slip's gone out to deep cover. But our deep mid-off has gone down to straight off. Our gully back out to square gully. And our leg gully's gone out to deep backward square leg. Just to give us some more protection on the boundaries. They're in roughly the same places but just a bit deeper. And it's allowed us to take some catches in the outfield. So we'll start with an off breaker to Cox. He's in on 11 off 7. And due to the constant stream of wickets in the early overs. It means that we've got two pretty new batsmen at the crease. The first First ball goes for a dot, which is what we want to see, so let's try and catch him with a flighted delivery. We want him to come forward and go aggressive, but I think it's a bit early in the match for that. But two dot balls to start is brilliant for us, we'll take maidens all day long. Two balls left in the over, we're going to throw in another flighted delivery, before we go for our top spinner to finish. They've all been dot balls so far, four without scoring, and now you can make that one five, but it was a little bit of a scare for the batsman. The top spinner's been really effective in recent weeks. A thank you to the couple of people that suggested that. But this one just goes to the man in the circle. And it's a maiden remarkably to start our spell. Back in for our second over. Worcestershire only scored seven at the other end as well. We'll start with an off breaker as we face Fell this time. The whole over was bowled to Cox I think on the last occasion. But this time the first ball's a dot yet again. Halfway through the over. Three dot balls so far for the other batsman. And we've gone for the same pattern again as we've had a bit of leeway. That one I think got an edge on it. How on earth did it miss the stumps? The wicket keeper couldn't take it either. So Fell survives a scary moment. We're going to go for the flighted delivery with the penultimate ball. And then we'll go to the top spinner to finish. So let's see if we can bowl it straight at the stumps. And try and force him into a shot. He's hit him in front and that might be LB. I don't know if it was just turning too far. We're not going to challenge as I think it may have been and we don't want to waste our challenge this early. Worcestershire still need a fair amount as well so we'll go for the top spinner and hope that's successful. He tries to sweep and it's just to the man at mid on. Unfortunately for us it's another dot ball. Two maidens in succession. We haven't done that all season at this level. Over number three as we're yet to concede a run. At the other end Rashid's going for just six or seven as well. There's the first big shot though and it's too fine for the fielder. It's going to be four runs. We just lost our line and length a little there. So let's try and get back to a full delivery. Change up our style here. Vessels is in at the other end. He's a batsman we haven't faced yet. And again he's aggressive but this one's just a single. And thankfully it brings the more conservative Cox back on strike. So we're going to go for a flighted delivery just to try and catch him in his crease again. He may come out and play and then we've got an LB shout. This one's just to the fielder for a dot. Standard off break delivery, not so much aggression from this batsman, again it's straight at the stumps and it's hit him on the pad, but I think it may have been turning away too much. The umpire's not going to give this one, but at least it's another dot ball. One more flight of delivery before the top spinner at the end. Can we catch him in his crease again? Going to try to go a bit wider to the leg side, just to bring the LB into play. But he's flicked away for a single, which really does worry me. Six off the over and Vessels on strike. We're going to stick to our guns and go top spinner, but I'm really worried about what Vessels can do with it. It's straight at the stumps and he sweeps away, but I think that's just going to be one. The fielder cuts it off pretty well. Final over then, just seven conceded so far. Worcestershire needs 60 off 24 balls. They've got Cox still in the middle on 34 off 33 now, and Wayne Parnell in on 11, as they've lost seven of their 10 wickets. We'll fly in the third ball of the over. Two dots already in this one, of course. We want to keep that required rate high. They've gone for the big shot, and it's going to run away for four. Really good shot by Cox, and it's too fine for the fielder to catch up with. 
Four conceded off three balls. So back to the drawing board a little bit. We're going to go for the full delivery. Try and catch him in his crease. This one's away to the deep but picks out the fielder. Just a single. It's five off four now. Worcestershire still need 55 off 20. So we're doing a decent job in containing the required rate. Two balls left in our final over and it's the left arm pole of Parnell coming in now. So we're going to go for a bouncing Doosra. We want to try and catch him in his crease. Just trick him with the wrong one. But unfortunately it's not got too much on it. And although he's got it away it is a dot ball. Final ball of the over. We'll go for the top spinner as usual. Parnell on strike now. He's already faced a dot ball. This one's at the stumps and he gets it away. But it's just a single to the man in the deep. Six runs conceded off our final over. And 13 off four isn't bad at all. Three overs left and Worcestershire need loads. Hopefully we'll come back to see we've won the game. There's the confirmation then. We win comfortably by 24 runs. David Willey, man of the match, took three wickets, although expensive for 42. In terms of our personal performance, no real highlights. 33 runs, the third top scorer for our team. But again, we set us off to a decent start and got out trying to be more aggressive towards the end when we needed to be explosive for our team. So we did the job we needed to. Then we're really economical with the ball. Sort of back to the old days in terms of the one-day cup, that one. Not taking any wickets and not really threatening to but not conceding many runs it's not something we've managed yet in this t20 blast so progress again and another win for yorkshire we're flying up the table after those two early defeats we'll go back to the career hub to see when we'll be back next and round off the episode of course as always so we've progressed to level 30 and we've got another perk we can assign so we're just going to go through and have a look at them we've also increased one of our batting attributes and we'll have a look at that in a moment as well so let me just run through these quickly and then I'll let you know which one we're improving. So I've had a look and I don't actually know what to improve here. There's so many different things for batting, bowling and fielding. I think we want to go for a general one now. Because in terms of batting, they're all slight cheats to me at that point. They're now beyond improving certain attributes. They're ones such as slightly improved off a glance. Better against right-handed bowlers. And they don't quite seem right. So I think we're going to go for either a moderate increase to fitness attributes. Or potentially a moderate increase to reaction times. Running speed is there and judgment ability. So considering we want to be an Alistair Cook figure, I think judgment is the best one to go for. Potentially leadership is there as well, but I don't want it to lead to us getting the captaincy more quickly. So maybe we'll do that one at level 40 or 50. So we're going to go for judgment for now. As we did mention, we've also improved one of our batting abilities. That one's footwork. So it's now up towards the top with control. And although we've got loads of skill points available, we're just waiting for the batting ability points to catch up so let's go through to the career hub with that done and see what we're going to be doing in the next episode we've got three more t20 games to play off camera and then we come back in four games time at the somerset oval which i presume is taunton in game and that one's for somerset v yorkshire the last t20 blast game before the first class season resumes so i hope you'll come and join me again for that one as we're making really good progress at that point but if you did enjoy this episode and that brilliant match against worcestershire please do put a thumbs up on the video let me know your feedback regarding the matches, which ones you prefer seeing on camera. For me, I like the T20 season as I can show you a bit of batting and bowling. But of course, this is predominantly a batting career, so when we play the longer games, we'll focus on that. But let me know your thoughts, I'm interested to know, and of course we can incorporate that into our future plans. Subscribe to the channel for three episodes a week from this Cricket 19 career, every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at midday. That schedule will continue until the release of FM20, at which point we'll continue with two episodes a week. Please also keep your eyes peeled on the channel later today. At 4.30pm we've got something special lined up. We'll be announcing our FM20 plans. There'll be some votes in there for you to participate in. As well as some reaction to features that have been announced. I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you are too. So please do come along and have your say. And then until the release of FM20, we'll be continuing our daily FM19 content. That's with Talkie United as we chase our elusive Champions League trophy. So come and join us from Sunday to Thursday at half four to see how we're getting on in that one. And then our Snooker 19 career continued yesterday at 4.30. And we'll do every Friday as we play for our final event. It's the World Championships as we look to end in glory by going on a run and winning the final. So come and see if we can do it over the next few weeks. But in the meantime, meantime a massive thanks for watching this one as always and your continued support with the series and i hope to see you next time for another t20 blast match as we come towards the end of the t20 season